Back in the basement again today to talk about this very interesting barbell from Nordic Lifting. This is their Mjolnir bar, which might sound familiar to you. If you like Thor, maybe you've seen the movie The Avengers, maybe you're just really into Norse mythology, but it translates into Thor's hammer. That's what Thor's hammer is called, Mjolnir. So really cool name for a barbell, but also leads to some pretty high expectations on my end. Now, Nordic Lifting, if you're not familiar with them, my familiarity is more with accessories. So I'm talking things like wrist wraps, wrist straps, knee sleeves, shoes, not so much actual gym equipment, although this is one of two barbells they offer, this being their power bar and another offering being more of a cross training bar. Now, the reason I wanted to get my hands on this is because it does have some unique features. However, taking a look at the barbell on a piece of paper on the specs, it's what I would consider prototypical, which isn't a bad thing by any means. In fact, if you reference my powerlifting bar video, I kind of outlined some things you're gonna to wanna to look for in a barbell. This has all of it, right? It has a standard length, it has center neural, powerlifting neural marks, it's 20 kg or 44 pounds, it's a 205k PSI rating, which means it's going to be very stiff based off of the specs on the bar being 29 millimeters, relatively thin collars, average length, good neural, and I'll get to the neural in just a second as well, and a load rating of 1,800 pounds. Pretty much everything you would need. And that being said, it's been fine for squatting, benching, and deadlifting. No issues with this bar. Nice and stiff as you might assume it be and performs adequately in the gym. Now, taking a look closer at some of the things on this barbell, the shaft itself, it is a chrome finish. The knurling is advertised as aggressive. I'm gonna put this more of like a five out of 10. It's a medium knurl, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because oftentimes when I get barbells in, especially from what I consider budget-friendly brands, they tend to be very passive, like at a two or three out of 10. This is a five out of 10, so right in the middle. Now you're not gonna get something like an Ohio Power Bar feel on this, not like a Texas Power Bar or an Elite FTS Power Bar. This isn't gonna be overly sharp or deep cut, but it's going to be grippy enough to do the job for the main three without it slipping out of your hands. And I'll show you a close-up macro shot of the neural itself. Now, as we go out here again, what you're gonna see is graphite bushings, which is typically a cheaper way to do things than some of the other offerings out there. But for a powerlifting bar and a budget-friendly one at that, it's fine. You don't really care about the spin on the sleeves, right? You're gonna be doing squatting, benching, and deadlifting, and not things like clean and jerks where you're gonna need that rotation. Graphite bushings are fine. The sleeves on this is where things get really interesting and kind of make me scratch my head a little bit. The sleeves on this, number one, are designed different than I've seen other people do it. Number one, it has the pressing in at the end of the sleeves and Nordic lifting kind of laser etched in. Nice feature. Not sure that necessarily adds to any functionality of it, but it looks cool and is different. I haven't seen that on a barbell before. Inside of the actual collar on the sleeve, you also have that same laser etching with Nordic lifting on there. I've seen this on some other bars like the Bells of Steel Naked Powerlifting Bar, some of the bars that Jim Way does. Not necessary, but a nice touch. But one of the most unique things is the sleeves themselves are stainless steel. And the reason that's so interesting to me is typically when you talk about a stainless steel component on a barbell, it's almost always on the shaft. In fact, most stainless steel shafts out there don't have stainless sleeves. That's like an add-on feature will make bars very expensive. And most people don't go that route because it's a expensive add-on for little return in my opinion. Now on the shaft, I think it's understandable, right? We talk about different coatings, how it can dull the neural, all that different type of stuff. And stainless steel offers one of the best grips out there outside of just bare steel, but it offers probably the highest level of corrosion resistance out there. Especially when you consider you're gonna have your hands on this all the time, you're sweating, using chalk, maybe you're bleeding. Are you sacrificing to win? All that stuff's going to speed up corrosion and that's why you really wanna protect the shaft of the barbell. With the sleeves, people don't usually care as much because there's gonna be plates coming on and off. You're not gonna be touching the sleeves as often. If corrosion happens there, it's not as big of a deal because it's just simply aesthetic and not actually impacting the feel of the bar at all. So most people, again, opt for a stainless steel shaft and some other finish on the sleeves being chrome, zinc, or even bare steel in some instances as a way to also keep the cost down. So I thought it was a very interesting way that Nordic Lifting decided to do stainless steel sleeves on this, and I can't really figure out why they did. In fact, I reached out to them initially when getting this bar and said, are you sure it's not a stainless shaft with chrome sleeves? Because that tends to be the standard, and no, this is how it's marketed. And for me, that's probably the biggest drawback of this bar. Don't get me wrong, stainless steel sleeves are nice. Stainless steel shafts are better in my opinion, but that's a nice feature. 
but the price cost of this bar is $340, which in my opinion is high considering what you get. Again, the specs on this are fine, but having a chrome shaft with medium knurling, the price point needs to be under $300 for this bar to be more attractive to people because spending $340 for a feature that many people won't see that much of a benefit from doesn't make as much sense. So you can get an Ohio power bar for under $300. You can get a Texas power bar for under $300. So why would someone spend more to get a bar from Nordic Lifting, who they might not be familiar with in terms of equipment, for a feature, stainless steel sleeves, that they probably aren't that concerned with? And my answer for that is, I don't know why. And that's my question out to Nordic Lifting. To me, what would make this bar better for most people is, number one, take the stainless off of the sleeves itself and put it on the shaft and try to keep it around that $340 price range because if they can, this bar then becomes very appealing as one of the cheapest stainless steel bars out there. Most stainless steel bars are probably gonna run you like $390 to $400 at a minimum. So having this come in even less would drive people to this bar given the specs and the fact that you get a stainless steel shaft. So that's one option. Now, their counterpoint might be, well, that's going to increase costs even higher. It would be around $400 or so. And then my response to that would be, in that case, just ditch the stainless on this bar altogether and go with chrome sleeves or something like that and get the price point down in general. If you get this bar sub $300, this bar then becomes a very good value buy, especially from a company who's known more as a budget-friendly band. Now, counterpoint to that is the fact that their Olympic lifting cross-training bar, which is 20 and a half millimeters, no center neural, a little bit less aggressive knurling than what's on this bar, retails for $250, and that has a zinc shaft with chrome sleeves. So $90 less. So let's assume that's around the price drop of what you get. So you could potentially get this bar in chrome and chrome or zinc and chrome for around 250 to 270. That's a good budget-friendly buy in this point. So. That's this bar, the Mjolnir bar. Good name, lofty expectations, a little bit interesting choices when it comes to the finishes. I think if they switch one of those two things around again, either make the shaft stainless and the sleeves chrome and try to keep that price point or get rid of the stainless altogether and try to get closer to 250, I think this bar would be a lot more appealing to people. But that being said, price aside, this is a good average powerlifting bar. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, but in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.